I started to pull pictures out on my phone. I, we've been uh, looking at, at lake houses. And uh, this last week we looked at like four lake houses. And, uh, boy, they're nice, right on the water. And one of them's got its own dock. Uh, you know, it's really nice. So I went to an auction the other day and uh, me and my grandsons, and we bought a whole bunch of guns, about 26 guns. Uh, cheap, I mean really, really cheap. Uh, it wasn't out the back of a car, it was, it was a legal auction. <laughs> I mean, I understand where I'm at. I don't, I don't understand legal firearms. But anyway, uh, I like guns. I like boats. I like, you know, four wheelers. Uh, I bought a mule the other day at an auction. A mule. <laughs> and all, yeah, and, and all, you know, y'all are just like when I came in and told my grandkids. I said I bought a mule. They said, "Well, how big is it? Can we ride it?" I mean, and I, 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 I let them. I said, "Oh, it's about normal size." And I said, "Yeah." I said, "Yeah, you can ride it." You know, does it go very fast? I said, "Well, yeah, it goes. It goes fairly fast." You know, they, but anyway, it was a, one of them Kawasaki mules that haul trash in, you know, and that we, we got to haul trash from the church. You know, it's got a little bad on the back end. It's a mule. But I've always wanted one, and I got one. I got a mule. But I, I, want, I want to, if you could have anything that you want, now, now think about it. Don't, don't just, anything, right now, if you have anything you wanted, but what if I could, what if you could have anything that you wanted? Now listen, anything. Some would say, well, I'd like to have money. I'd like to have a quadzillion dollars in, in, in gold. Not money, not paper money, but gold. I mean, a billion dollars in gold. That'd be like a good thing to have, wouldn't it? Uh, some would say, well, I'd like to have good health. And now you young people, would, that wouldn't be on something you'd name. But as older people, uh, I would like to, to, hey, I would like to get up in the morning and just jump up out of bed. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. I have to roll out of bed and I have to get on my knees and I have to push myself up by my arms to get up in the morning. That's I've had to do that now for the last 10 or 12 years after the rest. So, to feel good, to uh, have good health, that, that'd, be, man, that'd be a great wish, wouldn't it? God, uh, I, I want to have good health. Maybe some of you in this building said, you know what, I'd like to have the relationship fixed between me and somebody I love. And now, now, just think about that. I mean, I can think of somebody in my life right now that I really wish things were better than they are. And maybe that would be your, you said, you know, there's this relationship that I wish would be fixed. I wish it would be just like it should be, like it would be normal. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Y'all go through that? I mean, maybe even with your wife or husband. I just wish that things were better in my relationship. We go around this room and I could ask each one several questions. I could ask all y'all, you know. We could have a whole bunch of different answers around this building right now. But God told this to one guy in the Bible. And by the way, this guy in the Bible could have made a, a myriad of requests. He could have asked all kinds of things. Uh, by the way, the guy that God told this to, he had a wacky family. I mean, a messed up family. Uh, he, he had four or five stepmothers. Can you imagine that? I mean, a guy with four or five stepmothers. He had a half-sister that was raped by his half-brother. That's a messed up family. I mean, then another half-brother killed the half-brother that, that raped the half-sister. His family, in his family, there was disloyalty among them. Anybody in this building know anything about that? Family disloyal to you? 
This guy had disloyalty among his family and jealousy in his family and, and rebellion in his family and revolt in his family. Even had murder and incest and scandal. That's what marked this guy's life and family. He was the second son of David and Bathsheba. Everyone in the country knew about David and Bathsheba. Oh, they tried to hide it and they, 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 they tried to cover it up, but everybody knew about David and Bathsheba. And maybe this guy's request, his name's Solomon, by the way. Maybe this guy's request, when God said, okay, you can have anything you want, Solomon, I could see him saying, you know what, I wish Bathsheba gate would go away. I, I'm tired of hearing that. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of messing with that. But notice in 2 Chronicles 1, verse 7. It said, In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Wow, I mean, hey, you talk about genie in the bottle. We need to be sacrilegious here. But most, of, most of us know more about cartoons than we do about the Bible anyway. That's right. He said, ask what I shall give thee. Solomon said unto God, he's talking to God. He wasn't going to a priest or a Levite. He's going to God. There's no, there's no prophet involved here. Do you notice that? That's something maybe strange that in this era of time, He's going, talking directly to God. He said, what shall I give thee? Solomon said unto God, Thou hast showed great mercy unto David my father, and have made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over people like the dust of the earth and multitude. Then verse 10, Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I may go out and come in before this people for who can judge this, thy people, that is so great? There it is. God says, anything you want, just ask. Solomon could have said, I want money. I want big kingdom. I want to, you know, all this. He could have named anything. God said, ask what you will. Solomon said, give me wisdom and knowledge. And God said to Solomon, Because this is in thine heart, and thou hast not asked for riches, like some of us would, thou hast not asked for wealth, you've not asked for honor, you've not asked for me to kill your enemy for the life of my, thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, you haven't even asked for health or long life, anything like that, but instead of all the things that everybody else would ask, you have asked for wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. Verse 7, your wish is my command, is what God said. Wow. I mean, the God of heaven. This isn't no make-believe deal. This is the God of heaven. And he's saying, your wish is my command. Wisdom and honor is granted to you. And he says, and I will give thee riches and wealth. I'll give you the other stuff. I'll give you riches and wealth and honor. Such as none of the kings have had that thy had before thee, neither shall there any after thee after the light. I'm not going to go into all this because it will take too long just to read it off to you about what the wealth of Solomon would be today. There's nobody, including Gates, including the, you know, the sultans of Ireland, and none of those guys even compare to the wealth that Solomon had. Nobody has ever lived or ever will live that will have the riches that Solomon had. But what he did is he said, God, give me wisdom and knowledge. I'll get my message just in a minute. Proverbs 3.13 says, Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. And the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain greater than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things, get this, get this, this is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 15. He said, And all the things 
thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Now, this is holy writ. This is the Word of God. God said there is no request that you can ask that can even be compared to asking for wisdom and knowledge. That sounds like it's pretty important to me. God says not one thing compares to wisdom and knowledge. Knowledge is knowing stuff. But wisdom is knowing what to do and when to do it. Knowing stuff and then knowing what to do with the stuff and when. Oh, that's a big one, isn't it? Anyone here been in a situation that you didn't know what to do? Come on now. I mean, you've got a job offer, you know whether you should take that or or wait and take something else. Hey, hey, some of you young people, sh should I marry this guy or that girl? You, any of y'all ever face those questions? Hey, any ever would like to go back and get to redo that question? <laughs> I see that hand. That, <laughs> yeah, I see that. How many of you know that you can have knowledge and yet be an idiot? Yeah. You ever saw an educated idiot before? <laughs> Somebody had a whole bunch of, of knowledge, but, but he, he just didn't know how to use that knowledge? I mean, I mean, I mean, the, there's guys that have a lot of knowledge that believe you come from monkeys. Right. And looking around, he may have a point. But <laughs> I mean, hey, or maybe a gorilla. I mean, there's guys with boatloads of knowledge, got PhDs and you know, and, and all kinds of knowledge, but but they, but they don't have. I mean, they don't have any wisdom. They're they're idiots. They they're educated idiots. They're academia nuts. Is what they are. But I'm going to ask you today in this quarterly meeting. Do you have the wisdom of God? God says it's the single most important thing that you can have. God says there's nothing you can ask that can be compared to it. So if it is the single most important thing, have you ever, listen, have you ever thought about this? So, I mean, it is the most important thing. Well, God, I don't want to be a solar. That's great. Not as important as that. God, I, I want to be a great preacher. Great. Not as great as that. Lord, I want to be a great singer. Lord, uh, anything you want to come up with, God says there's nothing as important as having the wisdom of God. There's absolutely nothing to be compared to it. James chapter 1, verse 5. I want you to go there. We're going to be there for a little bit. James chapter 1, verse 5 says this. Now we all agree, have I established the fact that God says the wisdom of God is the most important thing in the world? Have I established that? Do you agree with me? Okay. Okay, that's what the Bible says. So since it is the most important thing, you say, well, brother, that the most important thing would be to get saved. Well, let me tell you something. You've got to get the wisdom of God in order to be saved. You've got to realize you're a sinner. The Holy Spirit does that. That's the wisdom of God. The knowledge that I've lost, and then God gives me the wisdom to go to the altar and get saved. Yeah. Right? I mean, yeah. don't that make sense? You didn't just get saved by, by yourself. No, you had to have the knowledge. You didn't get saved until you got lost. So you had the knowledge, and then you knew what to do with that knowledge, bring it to God, and you got saved. That's conviction of the Holy Spirit. So even salvation itself. Wisdom of God. Okay. Go to James chapter 1, verse 5. If any of you lack wisdom, <coughs> let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally. I like that word. When it's used this way. And upbraideth God. And it shall be given him. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberty. He doesn't have no reproach, and it shall be given to him. Verse 6. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, 
For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Now if the wisdom of God is so important for my life, then what do I do to get it? Isn't that a question? Michael, would you like to know that? If it's the most important thing in this universe for me to get, then I ought to be figuring out how to get it, right? Make sense? Okay. There are three steps in this passage here that tells us exactly how to receive this thing that is vital for life, eternal life, abundant life in, in Christ for everybody in this building. And here it is. Three points right here in James. Number one. You ready? Something will change your life forever if you'll get this. Here's how I get wisdom. Number one. I lack. Well, that's profound. It is profound. If any of you lack wisdom. Before you can have the wisdom of God, you've got to realize you don't have the wisdom of God. You've got to realize that I lack. James comes. I mean, James is a great guy. James, I, I mean, just read the life of James. Don't have time to go into all that. But, but, but here he's saying, if any of you lack, if you first of all, I've got to lack. Lack means destitute. Check me. Not just a little bit needy. Not just eighty percent me and twenty percent God. No, that's not what the word means. It's not, okay, God, I, I, I need a little bit of this. I mean, hey, hey, if it's not 75% God and 25% me, I've got to realize that I, Curtis Linton, I lack. I'm destitute. I, I mean, so many Psalms deals with it. I, I mean, how David came before God, he understood that. God, I'm destitute. I'm weary of soul. I mean, I, I mean I'm, I'm broken hearted. I, I mean, he puts it so many different ways about how he But understand, before you can have the wisdom of God, you've got to do this. God, I lack. I lack. There's this old guy in the dear friend of mine, I don't know if I've ever told any of you about him or not, he was a he, he owned one of the biggest tree uh, company from the high lines across the country, he would cut trees out of the high lines and, and had this, he had just a mile, it looked like a mile of trucks that he had, these chippers and trucks and, and big equipment, I mean he was a multi-millionaire he went to the Free Will Baptist Church at Bristow, Oklahoma. And I'd heard about the guy from a mutual friend of mine. Now this guy had a third grade education. His name was Benny Stiles. He was a deacon there in that church. Benny Stiles. I went on a Mexico mission trip with Benny Stiles. We went down to Mexico City and I mean, the, the started down, went down you know, to, to the Honduras border, and, and I was with Benny at that time that had machine guns, but put to my head and all that stuff, you know, because they thought we was drug dealers. But anyway, we we uh, we, we went all over Mexico and went to the orphanages, and, and I preached all over Mexico. Benny went with me, but 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 this guy, this friend of mine, had told me about Benny. So one day I got in my car. Because I heard what this guy did. That this, this old deacon would get up early in the morning and he would go to the church. And he'd go in the fellowship hall. He'd make a pot of coffee. Don't laugh at me now. Don't, don't laugh. He'd make a pot of coffee and then he'd go and he'd pour him a cup and then he'd set a cup of coffee across from him and he'd pour Jesus a cup. Now, you're going to ask, did Jesus drink it? No, Jesus didn't drink it. <laughs> he actually did that. Because here this guy with third grade education had learned how to get the wisdom of God. And I went in there, I'm getting doodads that just thinking about this. I went in there one time and I just snuck in because they told me what time he went. I went and I said, I'm going to watch this. <laughs> And I went, looked in the door, and I watched him 
Go over to the, the, the table and pour the coffee. He's up in years then. I mean, multi-millionaire. And he pours coffee. And he sits down there. And he starts talking to Jesus. Ain't that weird? You know, he's talking to Jesus. And the first thing he says, where I got this message. The first thing he says, he says, God, this is Benny. Like God, God didn't know who it was. I thought, you know, I'm sitting there here. Here, Dr. Lincoln is watching this guy. I'm saying, this, this guy's dumber than Ford Lot in the morning. I mean, I mean, good night. What more? Of that? My friend Burton Perry told me about this guy. I said, he's crazy. He said, God, this is Benny. Sitting there, Jesus sitting across from him. This is Benny. And then here's what he said. He says, Lord, I lack. I heard him say it. When he said that, when he said, I lack. I'm thinking back there, I'm, like I say, I'm sneaking, looking at the door. I said, this guy's a multi-millionaire. There's no telling what this old man's worth. I mean, he, he's got a house over here. He, he, he lived in a modest house, you know, didn't, didn't live in a big old giant house, nothing. I mean, I mean, uh, had a lot of land and stuff, run some cattle by me, didn't, didn't, didn't drive brand new, you know, big old nice trucks. I mean, but, but, but everybody knew he was most man. When he said, God, I lack, the Holy Spirit just started getting all over me, man. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit of God came on me and up and down my spine and her hair on my head started standing up. I mean, the Holy Ghost. He said, God, this is Benny. I lack. He said, I've got all these men depending on me to feed their families. Had hundreds of people that work for it. He said, I've got all these men that depend on me to feed their family. God, I don't know what to do. He said it again. I lack. I lack. He had figured this out. A man with a third grade education had figured what guys with doctorate degrees have not figured out. That, that you've got to come to God. If you're going to get the wisdom of God, you've got to realize you don't have the wisdom of God. You've got to realize that you don't have within you the ability. In fact, without Him, you are nothing. But most of us, oh, we say that because we know how to quote the Scriptures. We say that because we, we know that they're there. But, but we really don't believe it. We really don't believe that without God, we are nothing and can do nothing. We don't really believe that. Oh, Benny really believed it. Benny says, I don't know how to run this company. I don't know how to keep this thing going. I don't know how to keep all these things in fact. And every morning, his pastor said, he's there every day. Telling God he lacks. God, I lack. I realize, God, I hate you. I'm a sinner. I lack. Come before the Lord. I lack. Without wisdom, you're just a sinner. God says, I want to give you something to help you get this through life and to help you get through life. And I'm telling you today, what you need to do is you need to come before the God of heaven and say, I like it. We all like, but we don't want to admit it. The flesh and the devil and the world don't want to stumble ourselves. Because we have within us this drive to be self-sufficient. Don't we? And sometimes we even applaud that. Pull yourself up by your bootstrap mentality. You know, be a man. This idea of being a self-made man 
There's no such thing. I work hard. God gave you the breath in your lungs to work hard. You ain't got nothing without God. You don't have a, hey, that, that you, your, your heart can stop beating this second. I mean, you'll be dead as a, as a doornail. Right. It's the mercy of God that you get your next breath. That's God's grace and God's mercy. We lack. All of us lack. Oh, dear people, if I could just get this to you. I lack. I lack the ability to be a good preacher. I lack. I lack the ability to be a good husband. I, I lack. I've made so many mistakes as a husband. Amen, guys? I lack. If I could roll back the years, I've made so many mistakes as a father. And I'm finding out now I've even made a lot of mistakes as a grandfather. And if you'd asked me before, I said, I'm the template grandfather, but evidently that's not the case. I lack. I don't know what to do sometimes. I lack. I don't have the questions to all of life's... Uh, I don't have the, the answers to all of life's questions. I lack. I knew it all when I was in my 30s. I knew everything. I knew everything about church growth. I knew everything about budget. I knew everything about... You ask me any question about anything when I was in my 30s, I knew everything about it. But now in my 60s, I realize that I lack. I'm telling you, this is as good a stuff as you'll ever hear in your life right here. This is simple as Ned and the first reader. But I guarantee you, if you'll get this, it'll change your life. You come before God and say, this, this old deacon, get back to him and I'll get to my next two points and be nothing. This old deacon that had a third grade education, I don't know how many churches he built. I mean, he helped me build several churches in Mexico. I mean, just... Funded them. He he was a soul winner, went on this station every week, knocked doors. I mean, this old man till the day he died. Became a dear friend of mine, would come to my church, you know, quite regularly and just become a great friend. He's dead now, going to be with the Lord. But this guy had power with God. I've told you about being sick in Mexico that time and got to the point of death and had pneumonia so bad that I couldn't even, and hadn't had pneumonia since I'd had lung trouble all of my life. From the time I was born, I had lung trouble. I got pneumonia down in Mexico City, and I'm going to tell you what, I was in bad shape. I mean, had gone to the Mexican doctors and, and, and had the medicine there, and, and, and I'm telling you, I was coughing every breath to the point I was coughing blood. I couldn't even get it. I mean, I was in really, really bad shape. It's, I mean, really bad shape. And I was there, we was in this motel, and, and, and I was in there, and, and Benny, in the middle of the night, I was setting up because I couldn't sleep. I, I couldn't lay down because I literally coughed till I'd vomit. And I, I was sitting there at this little table there, just, uh, <laughs> just coughing every breath. I had pneumonia all my life. But this was the worst I'd ever had. I was down there, been preaching all across the country. Benny got up in the middle of the night. Benny, this old man that did, only had a third grade education, the guy that said, I lack, that had coffee with Jesus that morning. He came and says, I'm tired of that. I can't sleep with you a coffin. <laughs> he said, I'm going to pray for you. He said, I'm going to anoint you and I'm going to pray for you. He said, would you call? I said, yeah. I'd like to call the elders of the church that are here and pray for me. That old man began to pray for me. He laid his hands on my shoulder. I'm sitting there in that chair coughing my guts out. He lays his hands on me and he says, God, this is Benny. He said, this preacher here is about to cough. He said, oh, he, he, it looks like he's going to die. What? I didn't really want to hear that in the prayer. 
He said, now God, we got some preaching that needs to be done. There's a lot of lost people need to hear the word of God. He said, we're going over here and again, the name place we're going. He said, this preacher needs to have your touch. He needs you to heal him. And he grabbed me and said, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I want, to, I want you to heal this guy. Oh, I know some of y'all are going to say weird things about me for saying that. But I'm going to tell you what, I felt like warm butter's being poured over the top of my head. I mean, I guarantee you, doodads on my back so big you can hang a hat on. The Holy Ghost came in that room. And I guarantee you, the presence of God came in that room. Hey, Burton was in the other in one of the other bedrooms. Burton came out and said, what's going on here? Burton said, the presence of God is in this place. Oh, if we could just get back to that. Here we was. He said, by the way, I have my medicine there. He said, don't take no more of that medicine. He said, just, just go and go to sleep. I went down, laid down in my bed. And I started trying. <laughs> Y'all can't see it. <laughs> no, hey, come on now. <laughs> he was gone. I hadn't had pneumonia since. I'm 62 years old. I hadn't had pneumonia since. I may die of something else, but I don't believe it'll be pneumonia. <laughs> I will die of something else, man. Lord, take this. I'm just telling you. This old man taught me a lesson that I never forgot. It changed my life forever, forever. I lack. Next phase of my life, Brother Danny, I, I, I don't know, but the one thing I do know, I lack. I don't know what to do. If I rush out on my own accord and I rush out on my own ability, I rush out on what I think or, and what I'll be in a mess. But if I really want the wisdom of God in any situation in my life, first thing I've got to read is I, is I, I lack. I lack. Are you listening to me? Yeah. I lack. Come to God and say, God, I lack. If any of you lack the wisdom of God. Next of all, next of all, he says, I ask. Number one, I lack. Number two, I ask. He says, if any of you lack the wisdom of God, let him ask of God. God says, I promise. Just like salvation, he says, let him ask of God. Now, is that simple or what? Then why in the world don't we have the wisdom of God? Well, first of all, because we don't realize we lack. And we're trying to do it our own self, come up with our own schemes, our own programs, our own way of doing stuff. Or, or, I mean, instead of just coming to God and saying, God, I lack. And then go to God and say, God, please give me the wisdom of God. Lord, give me your mind. Give me your will. God, I want you to direct my path, as the Word of God says. I want you to be a light you up on my path. Lord God, I want you, God, please, to direct me. Give me wisdom. Give me knowledge. Oh, God of heaven. I ask God. I go to Him and say, God, I need your help in this. I ask. And then point three. And I'm done. In verse 6 he says, do it by faith. I lack, I ask, in faith. Oh preacher, that's what them guys on the radio are saying. Well, the guys on the radio are full of baloney on a bunch of stuff. Understand this. Because the stuff he's talking about, first of all, isn't going to be money and it's not going to be tangible things because that stuff may come, but this better come first. The things of God need to come first. They got the cart before the horse. Believe God will do what He says He'll do. Believe that God will do what He God says. If I realize that I lack wisdom, and if I ask God to give me wisdom, God says, if I do it in faith, God says He'll give it to you. He won't hold back. He'll give you wisdom. But yet we have a bunch of dummies running around in our churches. And a bunch of dummies without wisdom going around leaving our churches. Right. Amen. They don't have the wisdom of God. I'm afraid the dark denomination is lacking the wisdom of God. We've got to get back to this simple formula. God, if it is the most important thing, that nothing is to be compared to it, where God says 
I go to God and I say, God, I lack. I ask. And I, by faith, believe. Dad says, you think that you don't listen, need to listen to me. I remember when I was a kid, Dad said this to me. He said, if you, don't need, you, you think that you don't need to listen to me. If you don't listen to me, then you won't listen to God. We say, well, I, I have a little wisdom of God. I have a little, he says, liberally. Write that down. He says liberally. He'll give you a boatload of it. In fact, he'll give you more than you need. He'll actually give you more than enough. We serve the God of more than enough. Why? Okay, if this is true, if it's the most important thing, and God says, I will give it to you liberally. It's, uh, his word says it. We either believe his word or we don't believe his word. That's right. It's just the true or name. That's right. If I come to God and say, God, I lack. If I ask, and by my faith, I believe that what God's word says is true. God says he will give it to me liberally. Then why in the world would we spend a day without it? I think what we need to do, we need to start now, today.